Hey everyone, and in this video I'm going to go quickly over how to dodge and burn a image in Photoshop, specifically a more stylized image. And we're going to go a little bit into lens flare, which also adds to the, the style and adding light effects. So before we get into it, I just want to say this is actually part of my Hollywood processing course, which is now online, available for download. So there'll be a link in the below this video so you can click that link and go to it um, I'll also give you a little view of the uh, tutorial page at the end of this video so thanks a lot guys and let's get on with this tutorial in this refresher course I'm going to quickly go over um, how to dodge and burn using light and dark and how to paint in some light with a soft brush so let's start with the dodge and burn so dodge and burn is basically using uh, dark and light tones to create contrast in your image and it can pull out details, it can add shape and form to an image. And if you're going for the illustrated painterly feel, dodge and burn is pretty much the best way to get that style and feel. So the way I do it is I do non-destructive dodge and burn. So I use curves adjustment layers. So I'm just going to show you how to create the uh, dodge and burn curves adjustment layer. So you want to create two curves adjustment layers here. And then you want to turn the top one off. And you want to call this bottom one, let's call it dodge. And then you double click on the curves icon. What you want to do is just click in the center here and pull that up to about one and a half squares. Then you want to click on your leather mask and press control I to hide. And then we want to turn on <coughs> the top curves adjustment layer. We want to double click on the curves icon. We want to pull that down about one and a half squares or even maybe two. And then you want to rename this burn as this is going to be our burn layer. Press OK. And then we want to press Control and I to invert the mask and hide the adjustment. So what we want to do now is we want to put this into group. So if you hold down Shift, make sure both layers are selected and go to group from layers and call this dodge and burn like so so now we have our dodge and burn group so what you want to do is to create the dodge and burn we are going to, all we're going to do is paint on this layer mask so we're just selectively hiding or uh, unhiding the adjustment below the invert layer mask. It sounds complicated, but it's not, trust me. So what you want to do is select your brush by pressing B. You want to make sure your brush is uh, set to white. And you want a, a flow of around 13% when you're doing dodge. And usually I would put it down a little bit when you're doing burn. So I always start on the face. So I'm just gonna come in and start to do some dodge and burn. So again, I usually start off on the face, usually around the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So let's just come in here and start. So I'm going to start on the eyes. I'm just going to brighten up the eyes a little bit here. And all you're doing basically is darkening the darks and brightening the highlights to create more contrast. So let's just do this eye here. You've got a little bit of a highlight here. Got some highlights here. My face there. Get a highlight here, highlight here. Let's just go in and get that eye. Got eye. Let's brighten the eye up a little bit here. So you've got this here. We'll darken that after, don't worry. And then we've got a little bit of a highlight here. Then we're going to the nose. We've got a highlight coming down this nose here. We've got a highlight here. A highlight here, got a little bit of one here. Then you want to shape the mouth a little bit. Got a highlight here. And a lot of this will be creating depth, but you can pull out detail at the same time. Obviously, the chin comes out a little bit, so you'll have a highlight there. And then usually you'll have some kind of highlight around here, cheeks, the jawline. A 
What I'm doing as well is I'm resizing the brush to the different areas. You don't just want to use one size brush. So I say if I'm doing this line here, I want to resize the brush down to that kind of length to size and then just paint that in. Let's also do the hair. So on the hair, you've got the highlights here, the highlight coming across here. So basically you just want to like so. And we get a little bit of a curve here. So what I'll do then is that what I try and do is focus on one area. So the head and the hair is one area. So I'll uh, focus on that. Now I'm just burning. I switched to burn, so I'm painting on the burn layer mask. Now I'm just going over all the darks. So as you can see, the eyelashes here can really pull the darks out of them. I can burn the eye a little bit. On. So around the outside of the blue, let's turn this down. It's actually, sorry, to like a, about nine percent. Burn is always a little bit stronger, so we can burn in this area here. You can burn the bruising a little bit more if you want around the face there. Then we've got a little bit of a shadow here, shadow here. We're going to do underneath the nose. there as well. So what we want to do as well, we want to go around this head a little bit here. So like this. And basically I learned this from looking at how makeup artists contour faces because you can apply the same technique to dodge and burn on the face. Again, just adding contrast to the image by darkening certain areas. And you can you can zoom in even closer if you want and get all the tiny little details. It's up to you how long you spend on dodge and burn. So, get it on this lip here. So once you've done the face, then you can move on to other body parts. So what I would do then is I would move on to the finger here. So again, I'll switch back to dodge. Then adding form to this image now. Again, just brightening the highlights. Let's turn this back up to 13%. Cause we're not on the first now, we can zoom out a little bit because there's not as much detail. So now we can switch to burn and we can just darken these shadows here. Again, if you go too far, you can undo it. Let's put this back down to nine. And then just go around like so. Zoom in a little bit now for the hand. And I'll show you how we can just strengthen it and keep in the same um, of what you've just done at once so I've got a bit further with this. So now let's switch over to this arm. Let's again dodge. So you want to add some form to this arm so like the highlight would be coming down here. 
we've got a little bit of a highlight here maybe a curve here so wherever there's a curve there's usually a highlight so let's now go to burn darken these shadows on each edge which gives it more depth and then let's just add a little bit of dodge here here and got a little bit see where the form the shape of the neck is here where the curve is you've got the highlight and then when the curve is siege you've kind of got the darkness And then this area here, because it's not where I really want you to focus, I probably wouldn't dodge and burn that much. But I would maybe actually darken it a little bit. Because you don't want your eye to focus there really. So let's zoom out. So it might be hard to see what we've done so far. So that's why when it's in a group you can just turn it off and on. So now we've got the dodge and burn on. A quick way if you want to strengthen that is just to basically duplicate this dodge and burn group and then you can put add a layer mask and tone the areas down what are too strong so if you press ctrl j that will duplicate this group as you can see it's far too strong but what you can do is then just lower the opacity down to somewhere like fifty two and then if there's any areas where you think it's too strong you can just get rid of that but if you're going for the very painterly feel um, or cartoony look then that definitely could work so the next thing i'm going to show you quickly is just how to with a soft brush add some light in as you can see here we've got light coming in from this side and it's always good to when you're creating composites or even just sometimes styling an, a a location shot image is just to paint in some light so what i would do is create a blank layer I would put that onto usually either screen or linear dodge. Let's go for linear dodge now. And I would sample uh, the, the highlight around here. So the highlights around here. So I would hold down Alt while the brush is selected and click here. And as you can see in the panel, it samples that color. And then with a brush of around 22%, I would just then paint in around here where the light is. And then I would, with the fill, I would bring this down somewhere around 9%. And then you can add a, another one in, and this time we'll put it on screen. And then we'll add, this time we'll add some yellow in. So I want to click on here and let's bring some like orangey yellow into this um, somewhere around here. And again, I'll just start painting this in over the model like so. And then I will again lower the opacity somewhere around. Uh, so we're also getting that color bleeds now of the yellow or an orange into the image. Again, you can put these into a group and you can keep building up the light with the brush like that. So let's just put this here into a group like so so you're getting that light bleed of the model and it's just another way to blend the composite into the background or just to style an image and then if you want you could add an overlay on there so for example let's just add a an overlay so let's go into and get this overlay like so and then I will press ctrl A for all ctrl C to copy and then ctrl V to paste and then what I would do is I would resize this with a free transform and put it onto a screen blend mode and the way this works or how overlays work is they usually it's usually some kind of light effect shot against black and when you put it onto screen, any pixels that are darker than 50% grey disappear and it only keeps the pixels that are lighter than 50% grey. So all you can see is the light area. So then it kind of becomes transparent. So then you can just come and stick this, uh, the light part and get some of that nice lens flare 
over the model so it kind of bleeds on, onto the colors a little bit like so like so as you can see you still get now you're getting the mixtures of the reds in the here as well so it's kind of looking a bit more realistic if you were shooting the model with a lens and that's how you create the the stylized kind of light feel and the um it's good for blending definitely i use it a lot in in composites to blend but like i say you can also use it on if you shot a person outdoors in maybe some kind of sunny field and then you wanted to enhance the light and let it bleed over them, you can do it that way as well. So thanks. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is actually a snippet of my Photoshop education course, Hollywood Processing. So uh, we've been working on this course a while and I'm really glad that I can get it out to you guys now. So in the course you'll get refresher courses on things like dodge and burn, curves, clipping masks. You'll get a full follow through tutorial for going through one of my uh, more stylized action poster style images. Then you'll get a breakdown walkthrough of five of the Hollywood processing images, the images that have been used for book covers and uh, independent movie posters. Not only that, but because this is a compositing course, and I know that sometimes composite artists like to have the the files to practice and put these things together. So not only do you get all the education, so you get all the refresher courses, you get all the you get the follow along. Um, you also get a mega pack of stock Im model images. So um, eighty male and female premium stocks. You get sixty five PNG backgrounds, and then not all only that. You also get uh, a bunch of PSD files to work through so you can go through the layers and um, reverse engineer how we create these images and there's not only my images in the PSD images there's a um, other, another composite artist called Dean Samed who is an amazing book cover artist who's worked for people doing covers like Stephen King, Clive Barker you will get to also rummage through his PSD files so we've got some before and afters here so what I'll do is I'll leave a link below this video so feel free to go and check it out and thanks a lot guys for watching